For this presentation, I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the thoracic spine. So I've got a model in front of me, and I'm going to use this as the demonstration. So this is where we're going to start. So we have 12 thoracic vertebra, and they're known as T1, T2, T3, etc., all the way down to T12. The thoracic is unique because it naturally allows the attachments of the ribs that come in. So we've got 12 pairs of ribs which relate to the 12 thoracic vertebra. So naturally the first rib will be attached to T1 and T12 rib will be to the T12 thoracic vertebra. There are seven pairs of ribs that are known as the true and then we've got the five lower ribs which are known as the false and then the, the lower two, which will be the length and the twelfth, will be known as the floating ribs. In terms of the anatomy, naturally we've got the intervertebral disc in between, and in total of the whole spine we've got 23 intervertebral disc. And where they sit, these areas here, naturally as they progress down through, they are going to be bigger wider, etc. So this is known as the vertebral body along here. And a disc will sit in between the two vertebral bodies in here. So for instance, if that's say uh, T1 and T2, so that will be the disc that will separate the T1 and the T2 vertebral body. And if you look at it laterally, you can see these nerve roots coming out along here. So these are like the peripheral nerve roots from there. So if that's T1 vertebra, the T1 nerve root will be below the level of the vertebra. And where it comes out in the space, let's go a bit lower. So the space is known as the intervertebral foramen, like four amen. So the nerve root will come between that space along here. Typically in the lumbar or the cervical, where the disc prolapses, it can go into what we call the lateral recess. So where the disc prolapses within the foramen in here, naturally it's going to touch the exiting nerve root. But it's quite rare within the thoracic spine to have true disc prolapse. This area just here. So if I'm the vertebral body and I put my arms out like this, so these two stumps, if you like, are known as the pedicles. Okay, so we've got a pedicle on this side, and naturally if I turn it over, we have one on either side. And then if the pedicle continues around to form the neural arch in here, where the spinal cord will travel down through, then it continues into what they call the, the lamina. And then on the lamina, it continues as a point, and then that point will be known as the spinous process. So this would be the lamina here, so this is the lamina. And then think about like in the lumbar, they do something called a laminectomy, where re they remove part of it to go down to look at a, say, do a discectomy, where they remove part of the disc. So this is the lamina. So where the pedicle comes around, it forms into the lamina, which is part of that neural arch, if you like, where the spinal canal will, will come down. And then we have got these like pines, so where the fingers are located along here, you can see that they are almost like changing shape to go inferior. So we don't tend to have too much extension of the spine. One reason is because of the natural shape of these spinous processes in here. Like in a cervical spine, they are known as bifid because they've got two projections to each spinous process, not all, but some. And then in the lumbar, they are a lot wider. They call almost like a shape of a of like a hatchet. But in here, you can see that they typically will go like posteriorly, inferiorly coming down. On the sides will be the transverse processes on here. So the TPs, as they are nicknamed, and then the spinous process will be the SP. So SP, TP. And the rib will come in. So for instance, T1 rib will come in. And then where it attaches, so the rib is known as like the costo, so the rib will connect to the transverse process, it's called the costo transverse junction, and actually we've got 12 of them. And also the rib continues to attach onto the side of the spine here, when I say spine near the vertebral body, 
okay? And then that will be known as the costo-vertebral junction. So it's almost like a, like a small facet. The facet is known as the zygoapophyseal joint or apophyseal, hence the word facet because it's a lot easier to, to understand the word. And these are almost called like a demi-facet. So it's not a true facet joint. It's almost like a half facet where they come in and they articulate. So that's a little bit about the ribs. That's a little bit about the vertebral bodies. The discs in between. I mentioned the, the nerve roots between T1 and T12. Okay, and the nerve root will exit below. I talked about the pedicle, the intervertebral foramen, the transverse process, the lamina in here, and also the spinous process. I hope you enjoyed the presentation on the anatomy of the thoracic spine.